Hello there. In this quick video, I'm going to explain the concepts of capital employed and return on capital employed. To understand capital employed, let's look at a company's balance sheet. On the left side of the balance sheet, we have our assets. We have non-current assets, the long-term assets, property, plant, and equipment. Current assets, our short-term assets, our inventory, our receivables, our cash. Now, on the right side, we have our equity and our liabilities. Equity, the funds that we've raised by issuing shares. Liabilities, the amounts that we owe, funds we've raised by issuing loan notes or bonds or taking out loans. That would be the, lo the long-term. The current liabilities, as you know, that would be the short-term amounts due. That would be our overdraft and our amounts owed to our suppliers. So we could say this is the use of funds. We need cash to invest in assets, to have cash on hand to pay our suppliers and to ensure we have enough inventory. This would be the source of funds, where we raise our finance from. Now, we can restate this. If we take the short-term finance off of the right side, we could also take it off of the left side by subtracting it from here. Okay. Now look at this. Now we have isolated our long-term sources of finance. That would be our equity and our non-current liabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, equity plus non-current liabilities is capital employed. It's how much we've raised from issuing shares and how much we've borrowed long-term from other investors. And the capital employed then is going to be equal to our non-current assets plus our investment in net working capital. Okay. Or we could also say it this way, and the books often say this, we could say our total assets, which would be this and this, minus current liabilities. So that's how we arrive at two formulas for calculating capital employed. First one, equity plus non-current liabilities or total assets minus current liabilities. Now that we understand capital employed, let's look at return on capital employed. And to do that, we need to bring in to the picture our profit and loss. Top line of the profit and losses are sales, from which we subtract cost of sales, leaving us with gross profit, measuring the success of our products, and then we take out other expenses and we're left with operating profit, profit from operations. This is the profit we earn before distributing any of that to our lenders via interest or the tax authorities via tax or to our shareholders via dividends. So guys, operating profit is there divided by capital employed, the full investment in our business. I'll just abbreviate that. So what profit did our business deliver? This, how much do you, did we invest to earn that profit? Our debt plus our long-term debt plus our equity. So operating profit, divided by capital employed is return on capital employed, a measure of efficiency. How efficient is our overall investment at delivering operating profit expressed as a percentage?